All right, let's get started inside the send message component. In here, we want to have the ability to use our command shift enter or uh, to essentially pass through anything that's in the message. So to get started with, let's just go ahead and say key down and we want to just have handle key down as a method here. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say function handle key down. And in here, we want to pass through an event and we want to say if, in this case, event dot control key or event dot meta key shift key and event dot key equals enter. In that case, we just want to say send message event dot prevent default. And then in here, we also have one for where we say equals enter and event shift key and event control key and event meter key. In that case, you want to say default and we then want to say form.content and we want to append, in this case, a new line, just like that. So if we head back into mid application here, I say hi. And we need to run WeVerb as well. So and I'm now pressing instead here, Command Shift key Enter, and you can see that goes through instantaneously, which is perfect. So another thing we want to go ahead and fix in here is inside the message the view component. And in here we want to display the time. So at the moment it's empty. And and that's because we haven't essentially passed that through in here. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to create a new resource. So in here, we're going to basically have created as a date resource. So let's go ahead and just comment that out. And date resource is going to be in here. So in here, what we want to pass through is an array where we have two different values. And we have a date here, which is just going to be the full timestamp. So we want to say this diff for humans. And we want to say date time this two date time string just like that and then we just want to go ahead in here to create an add variable should create it add so now if we head in here you can see we get the variables here so obviously that's going to make that component very long and we just want to display in here human time but we want to have in here title as well, which is going to be message dot dot date time. 
we we're going to have exactly the same in here for daytime. And I'm going to add this onto a new line here. So yeah, this is now written two minutes ago, one week ago, and it all looks perfectly readable. If I hover over here, you can see that it says the correct time as well, which is perfect. Now, <clears throat> At the moment, this is now also a styling issue, so let's go ahead and see if we can make sure this is uh, set to the maximum of the of making this message bubble too long, like it is down here. So let's take a look at how we could fix that. So the way we can address this issue is we can essentially go ahead and say inline block, and we're going to say width fit and max width fit and we're gonna also make sure that we in this case have this there we go so now this looks a lot better and if I go ahead and say this is a really long message to test how it will display on the page. You can see that it goes onto a new line here, which is perfect. So we don't want this to take up too much space because otherwise it will look a bit bad here in this case, which is not great either. So what we can go ahead and do now is we can go ahead and create a new component in here because for this message part we're going to have a and in here we're just going to have a template we're going to have a script set up define props in this case we're just going to have a use object taken in just like that and we're then going to go ahead and make sure that we have this message object in here. So now to start, let's go ahead and just say avatar user. And in this case, we're just going to set it to the message dot user. And now we can just get rid of this here. And we can just go ahead and say avatar in here. So now we have this extra component here. And the reason for that is just to essentially simplify this component because we don't want this comp a lot of data going through because we are going to add more things into it. We're going to be able to show pictures and so on. So now another feature we really want to have in here is the ability to every time we load a message, regardless of where we're coming from, we want to go to the bottom of the page where the most recent message is. So we want to have a next trick in here. Where and we're going to have a container in here, which we're going to set to document the query selector. And we're going to have this as dot message container in here. And all we want to do in here is just say container dot scroll top. scroll height. So now if we go ahead and refresh in here it should get us to the bottom of the page but it isn't so we just need to I think apply this class and we want to apply this class essentially 
around here. Bottom of the page every time we load it. Instead of being at the top. So that's perfect. That's what we want in terms of functionality here. And now that we have that set up, we can actually go into our message component. And let's see if we can start displaying some pictures if we want to. So what I'm going to go ahead and do in here is I'm going to create a new component and I'm going to have this as um, message content dot view. So in here we're going to pass through a script setup. And then here we're going to have the message pass through. We're going to have a template in here. What we want to pass through in here is essentially everything that goes inside here. Um, and we can then go ahead and say message content. And there we go. So let's go ahead in here and add this here as well. Perfect. So now we're displaying the content in here. We now also want to have a case for where we are displaying the attachments. So I'm going to display the attachments as well in here, but I'm going to We're going to call this message attach men's view and in here we're going to have a script set up define props with attachments pass through we're going to have this required and type and in here we're going to have a template and we're gonna have in here a diff with a flex, flex wrap, gap two. And then we're gonna have uh, another diff, which you're gonna go through v four. Uh, in this case, actually, we're gonna have five attachments, key as index here, and. Um, what else do we want in here? We want to have the class as relative. And then we just want to for now print out the file. We only want to display the message attachment in this case. So if we are into message resource now, we can see we are passing through the attachments, which is perfect. So we only want to display this really if we have in here. Now inside the send message controller, we are already able to store these attachments here. So that's perfect. So we should be able to just go ahead and Upload these two thumbnails, say hi. So let's just go ahead and see what's going on. Inside view um, helper kit here, we can use this. So I'm going to go ahead and check the last message here. We do have an attachments array. We do want to go in here and say, remove this if statement for now. Uh, 
So let's just go ahead and see if we can print out this for now. And the reason why this isn't working is because we need to have this uh, on There we go. So we should hopefully just be able to say v if message attachment of length. And there we go. Now we're only displaying it if there's actually any length. And then we can go into our message attachments in here. So let's go ahead in here and have an image. In this case, the source is going to be we have essentially in here got path so we're going to just say file the path and alt an image of and actually we will just put the index in because that's what we know we know uh, image one or whatever you can basically just say image and then index because that's the best we have at the moment we don't really have any alt text because the user isn't providing i set some styling here for this image so you want to say weight of 32 height of 32 object cover rounded large You want to have in here a diff as well. Uh, and we just say VF. So the is image function, we can just say function is image, put in the type. And we just say return type and type starts with image and otherwise in here we just want to have a link to a file but at the moment we don't have that but that's how you would basically determine if it's an image and how to display it one of the things we need to do as well is actually make sure we have inside this component now and import link. Otherwise, this may not really work fully if you're trying to download the file. So that's perfect. So let's see um, what else we can do with this application. Let's start implementing a typing indicator as well now. So we have a few things we need to do in here. So as a starter, let's go ahead and create the styling here. We want to have a dot, which in this case is going to be a width of eight pixels and height of eight pixels, border radius, 50%. And animation should be typing. One second, infinite, easy enough. We want a dot, and we want to see nth char. And in that case, we just want to do animation delay, zero seconds. And we also want to have one here, for number two. Which is going to be animation delay. Let's say seal print two seconds. And then we need one for number three. And these are the elements inside the dot. And for this one, we just need seal point four seconds, give or take. And then we just need a keyframe here. Timing. 
percent, sixty percent, and one hundred percent. And we're gonna have transform. Translate Y zero. And then we're gonna have thirty percent. Transform trans slate Y and we're gonna have minus four pixels. And then what we just need to do is inside here. We need to add in the typing indicator. So for now, let's go ahead and add a class here, which is going to be flex MS Auto. Just gap X two and small gap X four. And then here we just want to have. Dot and BG gray 300. And then below, we just want to have span. We're going to have okay. So let's go ahead and take a look in the browser. You can see the animation works great here. Um, so one of the things we need to make sure of though is that this is actually staying outside the container, the template container specifically. Make sure we have the right classes here. And then this it into our messages container. I think that's everything all right in there. So yeah, let's well. So up here, we need to make sure we have the right class of supplier. And yeah, let's take a look at how. So that it works fully. So I'm going to go ahead in here as well. And one more thing we need to do is we need to actually draft this inside an auto div. Then we need to put this in this case here. Essentially and add in these classes specifically. And there we go. Now we have this nice indicator. Maybe you can see this person is typing here. Feel free to style it up differently. Maybe you want to add an actual profile picture. So I'll leave that up to you, but let's go. Typing. The reason why we are doing it this way is because there could be multiple users typing in a group chat and therefore I'm not adding a profile picture in personally. All right, let's go ahead and now add the ability to detect if someone is typing. So we need to basically have a controller for this. Controller here called PHP Artisan. Make controller and in this case, we just want to have in here the ability to broadcast an event where we are going to be 
showing you some what is typing. So we're going to call this typing controller. I'm going to make this invocable. Controller. We just want to have in the request and the chat. And in here, we want to have a message. Chat. Where. Use ID. Of ID. Then we just want to get the latest. First. Then we want to say if message in here message in this case we're going to have an update to it and then here we just want to set typing to false and otherwise in this case we just want to go ahead and say chat messages and in this case we're just going to create a message Event here, please be able to make event user typing. Inside this event, we want to pass through two variables here. We want to have chat and we want to have a public user user. I'm uh, just going to go ahead and make sure that this implements should broadcast now and it uses dispatchable. And we also want to go ahead and go into message event here. In here, let's just go ahead and make sure that we have this approach to broadcast it. And we also want to have public function message or broadcast with, sorry. And then This array is just going to contain the user and the name. And outside of that, we just want to head back into the controller now. We just want to broadcast a new user typing. Or user. And that should be it. So that should basically allow us now to, on the back end, indicate if someone is typing. Now we just need to make sure that inside that send message controller, so this would be you not know, inside send message, sorry, component. There we go. In here, we just want to call this then. So we're going to have a function user is typing and we're going to have a window echo private and we're going to basically just in this case whisper typing and then we're just going to do form that put the route chat user the typing and we're gonna pass through props to chat I've set the one here to const props which is perfect 
And outside of that, we just need to pass through, in this case, the options here and say, is typing true? And inside where the text area is, we're going to have an input and use its typing. Perfect. So inside web.php, we're just going to go ahead and create this new one here where we're going to have the typing. So in this case, on the chats, chat typing and we're going to put this as put we're going to have to chat the typing control named in here and outside of that we just want to make sure we have the correct root name And then inside show that view. We want to essentially listen for this now. So for this, we just need to essentially say listen use a typing and we're going to have a callback in here in here in here we're going to have um for now just console block in and then let's go back into our browser or mob inspect element. Use page is not defined, so let's go back in here. And I think what we need to just do is we need and in this case you can see that we get this through. So now we actually have some data we can work with. Perfect. So what we want to go ahead and do here is we want to have here a const typing users equals to a ref of an empty array. Say if, and for now I'm gonna actually leave out the chat to see if the same user just to see if it's um, working and show you how it looks like instead of having to show two screens. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and say if typing users value actually we're just going to go ahead and push for now this is not how we no, just want to say e dot user just like that and then we also just want to have a timeout here after a bit of time to basically just filter for it. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back. I'm going to say if typing uses that length. And I'm going to say in this case, user dot name. And then we're going to say v4 user in typing users key user.id and at the moment this doesn't work because we are not filtering the data you can see we just get more and more of the same request but you can see this is how it's supposed to look like roughly so let's go back in here and let's add the checks So 
actually break this down a bit. So I'm going to have a function here, update typing indicator. And in here, we're just going to call this. We're going to pass through the event. And in here, we're just going to have um, that the current user to use page props of user if either user the id is not equal to current user the id in that case we will type in users and in this case we want to have value get some of it a uh, user user the id is equal to e the user the id And in here, we just want to decide to go ahead and push it through. So essentially, we just want it like this. So now we don't get anything on this side. However, it should work in a different window. So that's great. Let's go ahead and make sure we also pass this through in here just very uh, long indicator here all right so with that sorted let's go ahead and allow the user to create a new chat so inside with the PHP here we want to create a new controller so I'm gonna go ahead and Making the controls called invocable. We already created this controller, so let's go back in here and inside our new chat controller, we want a few different things to happen. So First and foremost, we want in here to have retrieve through the validated fields. So we're going to have request, validate, and in this case, we're going to be going ahead and validating users. That's required. And that's an array. We're also going to have users. .star. This is for group chat basically exists ID and then we're going to have a use IDs here array merge validated users and we're going to have of ID And then we're going to just sort for use IDs. An existing chat. And this is essentially to check if we already have a chat with the same amount of users. So we're going to have a chat where has users function query use use IDs. And in here, we got a query here to check if when use IDs having row, where we're going to count them and see if there's uh, any existing chat essentially in here. And if there's an existing chat, all we want to do is go ahead and redirect them. And if not, we're just going to go ahead and say chat type count validated 
uses. Um, we're going to have crew, otherwise we're going to have standalone. And then we're just going to go ahead and essentially create the tab chat and attach the user just like we normally would do and outside of that there's much more essentially to do in here we want to make sure that we have everything working here so it says there's an arrow somewhere here so let's just see where that is I think we need to have another. There we go. Essentially creating the chat. We still need um, a few different things in here to actually make it work because we need to be able to select multiple users using a component for that. So let's go ahead and make that now. All right, let's continue onwards with this uh, here. Actually, I want to move all of this for now as well. Make sure that we inside we have the PHP. So inside here we have the chat show control, chat controller. We want to import this, and then we want to create a post route, and we then also. I want to say create chat and then we want to have another one in here which is a get route php artisan make controller show new chat controller let's make that invocable and in here we just want to have slash that's the ul here so we're going to call this show new chat controller. We're going to import it. And we're going to call this chat. All right. So with that sorted, let's head into our show new chat controller. And in here, we just want to return inertia render. And in this case, we have inside our project called a file called new to view. So we just want to have chat here. We don't actually need to pass anything through for now. So I'm going to go in here now and just going to have hi, just to see how it looks. Let's make sure that this one is a get and this one is a post route. So let's head in here and steal this template here for the sidebar. There we go. Perfect. So with that sorted, let's head in now and install the relevant files here. So for this part here, we want to head in and this case would be installing first and foremost, we need to install view multi-select there we go and we also later on need to use about go ahead and do is now head in and have a class of flex in here we want to have a primary button with a plus icon for now you can always add in your own svg that probably will look better and now we want to head in and basically create a multi -sum.
So let's add in an import this as well. And in here, we want to have a few different things. So we want to have a V model, in this case, of we also want to have a tag placeholder of add user to chat. And let's add that onto a new line so it doesn't get too long. We also want to have in here a placeholder search we want a label in here for name we want track by code we want an options array in here with options pass through We want multiple. And we want taggable set to false. <clears throat> and then you want to add in a few different options here. So in here, we want to have an option list here. And to uh, save some time in this controller, I'm just going to go in going here because we a we may have a search in this case and we may also end up having to display existing chats so that it works so for now i'm just gonna make sure we do this correctly so we're having chats here where we can search for them the ability as well to show all the users we want to collect. So let's open up inspect element and see why this is breaking. Every. So for this, let's go ahead and filter through the uses we get through. So we want to have uh, in here a const props set here and use props or define props side. And in here, we just want to have the chats and the users defined. We also want to make sure we import ref. The moment this doesn't look very great so let's make sure we also have the styling added in here so we can go ahead and just add that to the bottom so it's only showing in this component instead of the whole application just like at least in this case see them so because we're doing a lot of slots in here we also want to have in here a template with an option of option. And then here we just want to add in an image. We also want one here for single and multiple labels. So the way we're going to do that is basically going in and having the single label and the multiple label where we show the avatars. All right, so now we almost there. Only other thing to make sure is that we have in here also set uh, the value. Which is gonna be an empty array. 
And there we go. I'm in here to this array. And then we're going to have a form in here to submit it. So count form, and we're going to use form. And then here we're just going to pass through an array of users. Then we're just going to say const create chat. And in here we see, so we're going to have, in this case, inside the web.php, we have for the create one chat.new. And then we're going to go in here as well, make sure that we have everything else. I think this should be sufficient. So if I go in and say, let's create an app one with my. We also need to hook this up to the bottom. So if we go back down here, we just want to have a V on click. Okay, so inside sh uh, new chat controller, we have an issue with existing chat. So let's try to see what happens if we go in and say with these two instead. Okay, so it's still happening. So if we head into our chat controller, What we want to make sure of in here is that we have first. So the issue here is because we need to say that this actually equals and then we just want to after that count and in this case use IDs and then we want to grab the first one. So if we go back in here, let's go ahead and see if we can create a chat with these two users. There we go. So let's go ahead and take a look in the database to see how this now is. We have a group chat, which is what we expect. It's in here, which have all been set, which is perfect. And it's all connected to chat ID one, which is exactly what we want. So we can now go ahead and create these parts in here. However, let's go back into the sidebar component. And let's chat new to show. There we go. And if we go ahead and create a single one, we create a standalone, which is perfect. Chat. However, um, with that sorted, we also, in this case, have the ability now to do real-time messaging. So what we want to go ahead and do next is, when we go in here, we don't actually have any information on the top here. So let's go into our chat. And in here, just before here, we want to have a view component called top bar.
set up define props chat and we just want to make this require and in here we want to use the thing that comes by default with um jet stream we want to have A drop down link. So to start with, let's go ahead and create a diff in here, which is going to have flex justify between and also a border B2 and a width full and a zero. So let's go ahead and check how this uh, <clears throat> would look if we just put in some text. So I'm going to go in here and just say top bar. For chat, I'm going to pass through the chat here. And there we go. So we have this nice top bar now. Let's go back in here now. Inside the top bar, we want to go ahead and have a flex swing set to zero. We also want the ability in here to group it and block. And then we want a flex item center. And then we want minus. And in here, we just want a template with via chat that uses the length is greater than one. In that case, we want to have an image class We also want to make sure we have a V4 in here. So we want to have user in chat users. And we want to have a source here, which is going to be user dot avatar. We want all profile of user dot name. And for the classes here, we just want a pretty standard set of classes. And we also want in here key ID. And I think inside the user resource, we do have the ID as well, password, which is perfect. And otherwise, we just want to have a template. This is if there's only one user. And in here we just want to have an image. In this case, the chat that uses that length is equal to one. In this case, we just want to go ahead and get the first one in the array here. Let's make sure we add this in to new line and class here. And then we want an MS3 with a H3 with a fun semi -bot. 800. Chat, and then in this case, users zero dot name, and then we're gonna have the last active 
part here as well. You can see this looks quite nice here. So now we have also change around there because at the moment it doesn't look perfect here. So let's go ahead and see why that may be. So I think as a starter, let's move this template out of this here. And I think that should be it now. So we can now see we have is just the profile pictures of the users if we don't have the name explained, which is what we want. And then outside of that, down here, um, we just want another diff with the items sensor and the flex. And we just want to drop down link here with ability So that's it. Now we're actually able to see who we're chatting with, ability to delete the chat, real-time messaging, and ability to upload images, emojis. And lastly, we want to have the on red count set up, ability to delete a chat as well. It's delete a chat. So let's go in and create a controller here. Make it invocable. And let's create in here a post method here too. Chats. And then in this case, chat, delete chat controller. All right, let's go ahead and create a function in here, which we're just going to call the lead chat. Now, there is one thing we kind of want to do both for the message table and for the chat table, and is to basically add soft delete. So let's go ahead and say PHP Artisan make, and in this case, migration. Adds the lead the add to chats table. To chats table. And then here you just want to have a table timestamp deleted add. And down here we just want to say table drop colon deleted add. And then let's do the same thing, but for the messages table. Add, delete it add to messages table. In here, we just want to have a timestamp. And we just want to drop colon, delete it, add. And let's just close off these here. So we want to do the message model. In here, we want to say use soft deletes. And you can see if we add in here, in this case, it goes ahead and looks at deleted at timestamp. So we want to just go ahead and make sure we add this. And we then want to go ahead and say, in this case, const form equals to use form. Actually, we just want to have empty data for now. The delete. In this case, we want to have the root set to 
Well, we have been worked with PHP, so we have in this case got this route here, chat the delete. And this will require chat property in. So we have to say props of chat. You have to assign this to a variable. On success, let's actually make sure this is a function. We can then delete it. And then in here, we should just be able to say v on click delete chat. So let's head back in here, make sure we log in. Make sure we also migrate this because otherwise it won't work. Make sure we set the timestamps in here. So add, delete it, add. We want to make sure these are notable because we don't want it to be required to be set. <clears throat> Perfect. And then let's head into our delete. And in here, for now, we just want to pass through chat, chat, and die on, on chat. We want to make sure that we have the correct root method in here. So we want this to be at There we go. So what we should just be able to go ahead in here and do is to really just say chat delete. And then if we are back in here, you can see it's deleted. So if we have... And there we go. So what I want to go ahead and do in here is I actually want to go ahead and say broadcast in this case a new and in this case we have in here in the events folder we have a chat updated one we can pass through. This requires in and then we want to just return redirect route and we just want to have the ability to to go into this chat new just show because that's where we basically want the user to go back to so if i go ahead and say delete it goes back in in real time for the other user and that means we now have the ability to essentially add it in here. So let's go ahead and first and foremost, get rid of these use statements that we're not using anymore. And let's go ahead and open up Safari. And in this case, we have a user in here. So let's just take Tom. Just going to go ahead and add them beside each other there. So if I go in and say hi, Is showing up here. If I go ahead and click delete this chat, it isn't showing up in real time. And 
I suspect the reason for this is because actually in this case go ahead um and broadcast the lead chat. So I think we may have to go ahead and create a new event here. So PHP Addison make event deleted chat. So we want to go ahead and say deleted chat. We want to go ahead and make sure this implements in here. We just want to have a public chat chat. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy this bit here. So what I'm pass through in this case, when we have this event, just want to pass through the chat here. And we want to basically distinguish between this and here. So when we go into our shoulder view, Actually, may even be side part of you now. View we actually want to unmount it, just like we don't do in here. Go ahead and have the chat updated. Show so we actually update the last message in here. We go ahead and, in this case. We will redirect the user from here, from a deleted ad event, um, and then redirect them to the new chat page. So we will go ahead and do all of that in here. And then we just want to go ahead and copy this, change the event so we'll go to say chat updated. And one for, in this case, let's call this chat. So in here, we just want to basically modify the sidebar, sidebar items like we did when we ordered the messages. We basically create a list here and we basically go ahead and remove them and we will then push the newest chat to the top as well. The part here where we're going to go in and first and foremost say const updated chat and we're going to assign that to e.chat. We're then going to go ahead and say index and that's going to be assigned to chat list and in this case you're going to go ahead just like we've done before and we're going to have this list and that's going to be ref props dot chats we need to import this as well and then inside chat list we will now then go ahead into value find index of your name C which is gonna go ahead and get the chat that ID that's gonna be equal to updated chat dot ID and then we want to go ahead and say if index is not equal to minus one in that case, we want to go ahead and say chat list value updated chat. We want to go ahead and say chat list value is then going to be equal to an array. In this array, we're going to have chat list value index and chat list value filter is not equal to updated chat dot id and 
we want to have two equal signs there. So, if this is not the case, we don't want to go ahead and say chat list value on shift and log in again. Looks like we may be getting some errors here. Let's assign this to a props variable. Do is in this case, for now we'll remove this deleted chat part. We want this actually to be inside chat list value for each. And we want to just have chat. Okay, so let's go ahead and create here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a chat with Tom. At the moment, we're getting undefined reading of ID. We actually don't want to have proxy. We just want to go for chat ID here, just like this. So I'm going to go ahead again. Let's start over in the database. Let's go in and get rid of all of these. And let's go in and make sure we also have, we have free web started here. So let's just console lock out the element here. Another issue I think that maybe here is I'm going to just create a single chat here with Tom. It goes into this group chat here, so we need to make sure that new chat controller. So I want to go ahead and just in this case say dd existing chat. And it finds an existing chat. But if we then go ahead and say use IDs. We actually can't necessarily rely on it being in here, so we need to make sure that um, in this case we want to make sure that we just check where use ID. Change this around a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and let's get rid of this for now. So we still want to sort that use IDs just as we've done here. We then want to say if count use IDs is greater than, sorry, is in this case equal to two, and this would be including the use. 
so that's a standalone chat. In that case, let's call this an existing standalone chat. And we're going to have chat where type is going to be in this case standalone. Yes. In this case, we're going to say users function query use use IDs and we're going to in here have similar to before And then we're going to go ahead and say, in this case, equal to and count use IDs. If that's the case, if existing standard on chat is the case, return. In this case, route chat to show existing standalone chat. And we're going to have a pretty similar thing just for the group chat part as well. So again, we're just checking in this case whether they seem to match each other. And then we're going to go. And otherwise, it should just work like normal. So I've cleared my database already. Let's go ahead and create one with Tom here. And we're getting an issue here with convert to string. So we want to go ahead in here and grab the first one. And we want to go ahead now, make one with, well, and then we want to go ahead and create another one here, standalone with Taylor. There we go. And Lastly, with that now sorted, we're now able to actually create group or non-group chat. Let's go ahead into the browser here. In here, we just want to make sure that we are listening to the changes. So we're going basically for this one, chat updated. So if you go into the database now and just clear it off, let's start from the beginning again. So I'm going to refresh here. I'm going to have this on the start page. Same here. And I'm going to create one with Tom. The moment it seems like we're having an issue with Reaver because it doesn't look like it is. This is running. Okay, let's go back in just to make sure. Gonna refresh this page. Okay, is it still not updating? What is issue forcing it. Okay, so the wheel sign seems to be working. All right, so let's go into a database here and delete all the chats, make sure that we have that 
completely empty now. Let's open up the sidebar and just go back into this page here. Go in that here with Tom. Perfect. So we're getting essentially this chatter out here. So what we want to go ahead and do is we want to go in and say chat list. We want to go here back into the database. Delete this one. Create a chat with Tom. And we're still getting an issue there. So let's go back in here and get in. Let's try to see why we are not getting this through in real time. So we're having chat lists here, which is based on props of chat. Fine. So one other thing we also want to make sure we do, and this is to do with the search function. In here, we want to have a watch statement. And inside this watch statement, we want to make sure we import it. And for now, we will just go ahead and add it like this. In here, we just want to say chat list, the value, because do got new chats. And for now, this still doesn't fix the real-time problem. However, what it, it does is we add it for la later on. So at the moment, we want to make sure that this essentially shows the new chats in here. So let's head into our chat updated event. We are using should broadcast now. Just to be safe, let's make sure we have the correct approach to broadcasting right here. So we want to return a new chat. We also want to go ahead in here and I guess dispatch the event. So that's probably where this issue is happening from. So if we go back into our new chat controller, let's in here make sure we broadcast new chat updated. And let's go back into the database and delete this. And at the moment, we're still not getting it to show. So let's go back in here and see. So we are now broadcasting the creation of a new chat. So let's go in into the sidebar again. The E here. So let's just create a chat here with Tom and Taylor here. It doesn't seem to actually still broadcast it. This is what's weird when the real time messaging is going through. So we want to make sure we are calling the
Let's make sure we get this correctly sorted here. So, let's take a moment back and see where this could be going wrong. So another thing we want to try to do is actually replace this with the bus dispatchable. So let's go back in, clear the database again. Let's create a chat here. All right, so let's go ahead and remove this one here. So the issue is that when adding a new chat, we're going through this array here. So we need to essentially have another listener here where we're just going to push it into the array in the case that it's a new chat. So let's go in unmounted here and just have chat updated. And in this case, we just want to say, in this case, we say chat list value. And we can just add the chat, just like we've done with the show the view page for the messages. And we can just push it in. So let's go in here and say push. In this case, e dot um, chat. Let's go into the database here and get rid of these. Let's go ahead and create a new chat. I think we just want to rerun NPM. Let's see what the error is here. Um, yeah, so in this case, we... I'm sorry, in the channels of PHP page, we based it on chat ID. <coughs> that won't quite work here, because we basically... Well, we could do this. So we'll, this is basically not really a way to do this without having to create a new... Um, method inside channels of PHP. So what we could go ahead and do in here is just do event here, which is going to be PHP artisan make event new chat. And then we're just going to go in chat updated here and basically just copy this whole thing in and just rename this to new chat. And instead of broadcasting it on this bit here, we just want to broadcast this for inside. Go on the use ID here. And we also want to make sure we have a user in here. Just like this. So in this case, we will have to go in here and essentially inside our new chat controller, we will have to go in instead of saying chat updated, we have to go in and say for user IDs and a choose ID. But then we're just going to say broadcast new new chat with chat and user find use ID. <coughs> and that will essentially broadcast this inside new chat, which is 
can go ahead and close that now. And we can go into our sidebar here. And we just need to listen for this private event here. And in this case, let's go in and make sure we get the... So I think we're already getting the user ID in this case inside our show the view page. So let's go down here. And I think that should work. Let's console log in here to resolve we get whenever we create a new chat. Okay, so that's not going through. That's because we're listening on chat updated. You probably already noticed that. So let's go back in here and get new chat out. And in this case, we just want to have new chat to listen to. And it's still not broadcasting, so let's see why that is. So to get started with, let's just go ahead and console lock this out. Yeah, that seems correct. So that works fine. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that we have everything set up properly in the new chat event here. We use should broadcast now. We are passing through a chat resource, which is fine. That's just what we expect. We are also in this case listening for new chat. Let's go ahead and see if the event went through. It does look like it went through as well, so that's good. Let's go ahead and essentially split this into some. I'm going to call this for update chats. And instead of being just saying update chats in here, this one we're just gonna have new chat. This is gonna keep our a bit lighter, I think. <coughs> so at the moment, we're still not being able to find essentially listen for this here. So in this case, Let's go ahead and see why that could be. So one of the things we need to do in here is we need to prefix this with private. And let's go ahead in here now and lock this one out here. Let's go ahead and delete all the chats again. We can uh, console lock chat list. To be consoling lock out something here and it does seem to be updating automatically so if i go back in just to double check this back in new chat new chat i'm just going to create one here with the tilde and it's there perfect so now we're actually adding a new chat we're able to 
update the old chats here and that allows us essentially to have this real goes ahead and happens now if I go ahead and create a new chat here again we see it on both sides here but if I go ahead and decide to delete this chat it still stays here but it isn't here anymore so let's go ahead and see if we can actually address that so we currently inside the need chat we and that basically goes through here on the private chat part here. So what we should be able to do is inside sidebar in here, we should be able to have another uh, listen. If we can actually console log out when it gets deleted just to start with so i'm gonna go ahead and delete this chat and we're getting it locked here and i think that's the only place we're actually doing console.log just to make sure yeah it is perfect so now we just want to go ahead in this case value on shift e dot chat delete issue. All right, so let's go back in here now and make a few adjustments. So to start with, let's create deleted chat ID and set that to e.chat.id. Let's make sure we have an index, which we're gonna set to chat list value chat chat.id is equal deleted chat ID. And then let's go ahead and say, if index is minus one, in that case, we want to go ahead and say chat list value splice index one. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and say if the chat ID is equal to current chat ID. Currently, we need to set the current chat ID. We can actually just say props chat.id and then go in here and say, um, let's get the chat passed through here first, actually. So we're going to set that to true. So we always get the chat through in here. So let's go in and add that to the sidebar now. But just saying chat, chat, just like that. And in here now, we're actually able to then say that on new, ch on deleted chat, in here, we need to basically redirect them. <clears throat> let's go in here to inertia here. And let's go ahead and make sure we use the router. And in this case, we want to say router dot I think we just want to go to, let's say, let's say we just want to go to redirect or Replace the URL actually. Let's replace the URL in here with root. And we want to just get the new chat URL in here. And see how that will work now. So none of these have any chats. Let's go ahead and create a chat. Shows off 
automatically, which is perfect. I go ahead and delete the chat, go back to this page. And in here, we're getting an undefined props.id issue, chat.id. So So I knew the view as well because we have the sidebar out of here. We don't actually have the chat loaded in, which in this case would be um, an issue where we don't actually need too much to worry about it because we are on a page where we don't really care about it. So let's go ahead in here and go to the both pages. And it seems to work, both of them are now on the new chat page, which is perfect. So <clears throat> with that sorted, we now have the ability to switch between pages here easily. We now have ability for real-time messaging with image uploading. So the next thing we really want to go ahead and do is to essentially create So let's head into a chat model now. So I want to go ahead and create a few functions in here. So first and foremost, let's create public function users with timestamps belongs to many. And based on last thread app. which we do have inside our messages table here. Actually, so we need to add that into our um, messages table. So, or into our chat. It's, sorry, it's in our chat. It's up here, sorry. So we will use this um, users with timestamp here. And we will have a public function on red count in here, and we will have an integer returned. And in here, we're going to basically just return the messages with the user. So what we're going here and doing in here, how many messages does on red based on the timestamp here? And then if we go into our chat resource in here, we should just be able to say this. On red count. So now we should always have that information. So if we head into our sidebar item page here, We should just have to run red count there. So let's go back in now and let's just write a message in here. Okay, so that's still not going through. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to just refresh and I'm going to go in and make sure that we have on red count. Open it up here. So currently that's set to zero. So if we go back in now and I'm going to write another message here. Still set to zero. So let's just go ahead and check why that may be. So in our chat user table, we need to also set last read at. So let's go back into our
And let's go into our chat show controller. So because we always have a chat pass through in here, what we should be able to just do is say chat. My and then head into our chat model again. And all we should have to do in here is just create a small function. Just like this. Use this instead here. Okay, and then inside chat show controller, we will just now need to make sure that we have inside our sidebar item. Let's get rid of this bit here. Leave it at this for this video because it's getting a bit longer than I expected. So we will do an extra video. In the last video, we will also publish this to a website using SSL. So stay tuned for that video, which will come out in the next week.